What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of My Summer Car. As always, if you guys are enjoying this series, make sure you leave a like on the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. In the last episode, we were very, very close to finishing the Satsuma, but unfortunately, we did end up running out of time. So, today, it's going to be a no BS type of episode, all right? I'm getting straight to work in the garage. We're finishing the Satsuma today, and hopefully, we'll be able to turn it over and everything will just work perfectly and we'll have zero issues whatsoever. First thing we're going to do today is grab our 7 mil here because, once again, I forgot to tighten the clutch line right back here. So we're going to get that done and then, down in the front, I also forgot to tighten the ground bolt to the starter. So now that those things are done, we can officially move forward. We're going to keep using our 7 mil, but I think we're going to swap it out for the socket wrench instead just because, you know... It's quite a bit faster. After all, we'll move down here into the inspection pit, grab the exhaust, and this thing is a little tricky to get in the right position. I'm just gonna drop it right up top here, and then usually if you do that, you can kind of crouch down a little bit better, and eventually, eventually you'll find the spot where it wants to... Okay, this is not working. A hundred percent not working. Here we go, finally! All right, so since we've got our 7 mil already in hand, we've got two 7 mils up here at the exhaust header. That's going to connect it to the rest of the exhaust system. And then we also have one more 7 mil right back here. And now we can grab our muffler. And that, thankfully, just has the one, uh, the one bolt as well. Dude, these flies? These flies today are driving me nuts. Like, I, I actually can't even hear myself think now. Okay, and then this is happening... We're not off to the best start. I know a lot of you are also equally as annoyed with the flies, but imagine imagine trying to basically give a presentation with the flies buzzing around your ears at, at all times, dude. It's very, very distracting. That's kind of just where I'm at right now. So next we've got the uh, gear mechanism, gear lever thing. That's going to be a 5 mil. I believe there are three of them under there. Gear linkage. Gear linkage was the thing that I was looking for. Now that the rain is back, we're going to grab our screwdriver out of here and start installing the radiator hoses. This is going to be one of a two-piece hose design. These are typically a little tricky to, like, find the final resting place of as well. But we've got that one installed. We'll come grab, like, the second portion of that. Once again, this is kind of a, a two-piece design here. So that is going to go right there. And we've got to clip our face through the front bumper so we can actually see these screws. I think the other one we're going to have to do from, like, the fender side over here. There we go. All right. And then we've just got this one here. It only rains for, like, two minutes. It's, it's already done. It's already over. I'm not complaining. I know it sounds like I'm complaining. But, like, if you're going to rain, just rain. Why would you only rain for a few minutes? With the radiator hoses now installed, we're going to grab a 14 mil socket. Make sure we're loosening here. We've got to get these axles installed, dude. Thankfully, we don't actually have to remove the wheels in order to do this. We just have to loosen those two 14s. We can then come right over here, grab... The game calls them half shafts. I would just call them axles. Call them whatever you want. It, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. There's another really loud fly that just came buzzing by my ear. And apparently these are also, there we go, also kind of difficult to get into position. But we can tighten this one. And then there are three more bolts on uh, the side that actually, you know, plugs into the gearbox. But we'll do those after we're done using the 14. Now we're going to need a 9mm. We can crouch back down. Once again, clip our whole face through this fender. And then we can get these three bolts on this side. We'll do the same on the other. Alrighty, now we are ready for fluids, dude. We're kind of flying through this, if I'm being honest. And I am very, very nervous for what's to come. What if what if we've gone through... Oh, these are really tricky sometimes, too. But what if we've gone through all this trouble, and it doesn't even turn over? What if? You never know. Any day now. Oh, there it is. All right, we've got it. This one's going to go empty, though, like halfway through. Yep, there we go. Okay, so we'll just grab another one. These flies, man, I tell you what, I'm going to have to shower. Dude, I, I can't deal with these flies right now. They're actually 
getting on my nerves, which is weird because they don't usually. It's it's just today for whatever reason. Maybe it's because I'm I'm already stressed about turning this thing over. Like can you just can you just start pouring, please? And then this one sort of same thing. It's going to go empty on us. We'll have to get our third one. But that's why we bought 3, you guys. We are more than prepared for this. And that is all she wrote. So we do have a little bit of brake fluid slash clutch fluid left over. Um, that's now in the vehicle. So let's remove that. We'll put it up here on the shelf. Now we can loosen up the oil fill cap on the valve cover right here. Grab our M oil, our 10W40. And we can start getting this poured in as well. This, once again, probably going to be a little weird. We'll just hold it right here. I don't know how it's pouring. You don't actually see anything coming out of the bottle, but it's working. We should have just a little bit of extra oil as well, so we'll huck that back up there. I don't think I've ever checked the dipstick in this game before. I know I've done that in, in similar games, but can't say I've ever done that here. There we go. We're at max fill. Go ahead and put that right back in. So now, ladies and gents, obviously... We need to fill the coolant reservoir as well. Or I guess more specifically, this doesn't have a reservoir. It just has the radiator. But we didn't buy any coolant, you know? So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to eat a sausage. Uh, we're going to come over to the sink. We're going to drink until we just can't drink anymore. Until that urine bar is as red as can be. And then we're just going to quite simply pee into our radiator. It would probably help if we at least remove the radiator cap. There we go. Now we'll stand up. Hopefully this works. It appears to be filling. Okay, my aim is, is pretty good. Right out the gate, pretty happy with that. We'll let this thing fill up and then when our stream becomes a little bit more weak, we can just press P again and it'll kind of give us a little bit of boost for a second. There we go. And we're almost full. Come on, come on, keep her going. Keep that stream going. Okay, we're full. We've done it. Now we have to finish peeing just into the inspection pit, I guess. That way we can tighten up that radiator cap. Okay, one last fluid that needs to be added, and that is, of course, gasoline. So we'll get our gas cap unscrewed back here. Then it is kind of dark still, but I think I can see our jerry cans, okay? Yeah, no prob, no prob, no prob. Should we smoke while we're filling the, the gas tank up with gasoline? That's probably a good idea, right? I guess it can wait until after we're done filling this thing up. But we do need to decrease our stress pretty badly. Okay, about a, about a half tank. A little over half a tank. That's actually pretty good, considering how small these jerry cans are. I mean, it it hardly filled up the keck net whatsoever. And we, like, completely emptied the, the diesel canister into there. Okay, let's quickly take a drag off of this dart. And then... I'm probably going to shower so we can get rid of all the fly noises, sound effects. And then maybe we should sleep as well. And also save. Because, like, what if the Satsuma catches on fire? You know, I don't... Hello, okay, yeah, we're really stressed now. I did not swear. Okay, it should be going down. The next morning. All right, it is officially a new day. Well, it's still Tuesday, I guess. But it's later in the day now. Anyways, is anyone else nervous or is it is it just me? It's probably just me, I would think. Let's hop on in here, dude. Here goes nothing. Well, hopefully something. Let's be real. So, we're going to hit the ignition. We're going to pull out the choke. I've already got my controller close by because we're going to have to, you know, give it a few revs while we're turning her over. Here she goes. With any luck, it'll start right up. No sweat. Oh, I'm not in driving mode. There we go. I was like, the gas pedal's not working. Okay. Still giving it gas. Nothing happening yet. There she goes. Dude, I don't remember it being this easy. Surely something's messed up in the engine bay. There's, there's no shot that we got this first T, dude. I don't... I don't believe it. I genuinely don't believe it. Okay, seems like we can shift through the gears just fine. That uh, that appears to be working okay. Let's drop the handbrake here. We'll put her in reverse, Terry. Rev her up, you know, a decent amount so we don't uh, stall the thing. And we'll just back her on out. Okay, we're smoking a little bit. So we might be running kind of rich, maybe? 
We'll just put her back into neutral. We'll let it, we'll let it idle. It's our AFR. 11, 10, 11-ish. 11 okay, not terrible. A little lean, but hopefully, yeah, because if you have the choke out, right? Let's put that back down. There we go. Okay, yeah, very rich. Very, very rich. We're, uh, we're reading a 16 at the moment. I think we want to be, like, in the green zone, but maybe it'll, maybe it'll get a little bit better as we let the thing idle, dude. This thing's running, though, you guys. I seriously can't believe that. I, I didn't think it was going to be that easy for us. Like, surely, surely something is, is about to fail here. Because we, well, we bought the alternator, we bought the starter, and we bought a new head gasket. And we also had all four good pistons from the get-go, so... I mean, maybe, maybe our luck's just turning around. We're gonna wait a little while, let this thing warm up some more. Hopefully our uh, urine temperature will increase and eventually open up the thermostat so we can get some cooling happening. But as we've just let the thing sit here at idle, our AFR gauge number, like the value, has come down significantly and it looks pretty dang solid now. So all those adjustments that we made, you know, as we were installing these parts, I think it all paid off. Two very boring minutes later. It's been a few minutes now. It seems like we're kind of hovering around the 14 to 14.9 range for AFR, which is pretty dang solid, you guys. I really cannot believe this. I genuinely cannot believe that this thing is running right here, right now. With no, like, loud noises, no squeaking from the alternator belt or anything of the sort. I thought for sure I would have to do, like, a good hour, hour and a half of just troubleshooting. So I, I don't even really have anything else planned for today's episode. I thought for sure we were going to just run into issue after issue after issue. But it's been very smooth. Knock on wood. We do have a few things that we have to, you know, still install onto the vehicle. Or actually, one thing. Just the hood that needs to be installed yet. And then one thing that needs adjusted. And that's our tie rods. We have yet to do that. So hood's going to go right there. We can go ahead and open her up. If it will open. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's the hood latch. Dude, I forgot all about that. Okay, now... Now we've got much easier access to these four bolts. Now for the tie rods, we're going to need a 14 millimeter spanner. This guy right here. And then I want to say it's max down. So max scroll down and then up 60 times. I'm going to have to double check the, the wiki, but that sounds right. Quick little visual inspection. Quick eyeball alignment. Seems pretty dead on. If you ask me, dude. Now we can close up the hood and we can drive this thing around. Well, as I said, I don't really have anything else prepared or planned for us to do today. So I suppose we'll just hop behind the wheel of old girl here and start taking her on a little cruise. We can't really like, I mean, we could go anywhere, but Quavo's going to be closing soon. It's it's a little late in the day, even though realistically we should be filling up the, the fuel tank on this and then also our jerry cans. But we'll just go for a little rip. You know what? Nothing too crazy. I think when when the Satsuma's first being built, the gearbox condition is very, very poor. So I'm going to be extremely careful not to downshift crazily and, you know, possibly blow up the transmission. Uh, but we'll just go for a nice leisurely cruise. Sounds like a good plan. Oh, it's only a four speed? I forgot about that. Okay, well, we'll just keep it in fourth then and keep on cruising. Let's go down to like the um, the railroad and then we can we can do like a, I don't know, not a, not a time trial, not a like max speed run or anything, but I wanna, I wanna get it up there. Oh, there is a person crossing the road. You, what are you even doing? Why are you, why are you out here doing that? If any of you know who that was from town, let me know. Everyone looks the same to me. But we'll come down here to the, to the railway. We'll see, again, not necessarily how fast we can go, but I want to see what the, what the 77 horsepower on this girl is, is all about. Oh, are we, are we too low for this? 
I mean, we're moving now. I thought we were bottoming out at first on the, like, on the rail itself. We also don't have any way to, like, monitor RPM. So, might have to swap that clock gauge out for some RPM later, but should be fine for right now. I'm keeping a close watch on that rear view mirror too, dude. I don't want some Harry Potter type situation to occur in the Kekmet, and I certainly don't want it to occur in the Satsuma. It's so much faster. Like, driving this thing, ooh. Okay, I'm kind of grinding on the rail here. Um, driving this thing around compared to the Kekmet is gonna be just unreal. Like, we're gonna be able to go places, ooh. Ouch, dude, that hurts my soul. Um, but we're gonna be able to go places so much faster now. Oh no, oh no! And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you save before driving the Satsuma. Kazo, Kazo came out of nowhere, dude. And look, he's gone. Just ghosted us. Yeah, he came out of nowhere. I Honestly, I should have veered off to the left because the land's a little bit flatter over here. Instead, I went into this little ditch and uh, completely, like, did a front flip. Just about. Lost our front bumper. This thing's probably very badly damaged, if I had to guess. But again, that's why we save. So we just have to bolt up the hood again and then also redo our alignment. But apart from that... Nothing's changed. Still in one piece, no broken windshield, nothing like that. So in the next episode, we'll actually be able to use the Satsuma then as sort of our delivery vehicle. Um, hopefully we'll be able to do some more Kiyu deliveries a little bit faster now. And uh, overall, I think this is just going to improve our quality of life 100%. But having said that, I do think that's where we're going to wind things down at for today. So once again, if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like. Leave a comment, help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.